systems are a different piece than, let's say, some physical quantity. Let's take a physical example. For a physical quantity, <coughs> could be represented as, as scalar or vector. Let's make sure you go through all these things. <coughs> Let's take one of the simplest of those. Let's take a physical quantity called the gravitational momentum. Some just plus thirty one. Remember what gravitational potential is? What's that? That's that's a constant. Close. You're on the right track. Uh, the, the potential energy V uh, is given by G. Actually, let me, let me draw a picture here. There's a mass M, right? And there's a distance R to, to, to a position here, right? <laughs> So you could write this as a spherical coordinate, u of r t theta equals something. But because this is a point or a point mass, you don't have to worry about those two quantities of spherical coordinates. Does that help any? So u, you said g, that's the 9.88 or whatever it is, times the mass divided by R. Notice R. Right? So the potential energy varies linear is one at one over R relative to the to this mass M. So the farther we go away, this number gets bigger, so this number gets uh, small. Uh, actually gets bigger. Uh, so what, what does this have to do with anything, right? Uh, this is a functional relationship. This is a scalar relationship, right? There's no vector involved here. This is just a raw number. Uh, so for every position in space, r, there's a finite value for v. So how does that relate to anything else? This is what's called a scalar field. It varies in space where a number varies in space. So if you got, you know, I put that in x, y, z position. For every point x, y, z, there's a value, there's a number. But that number varies spatially in position. Now in x, y, z, it would be ugly, or not necessarily ugly, but it's it's harder to deal with because you have components that are going to give rise to this. So all three components would have values. And they have to sum up to make that particular number in the three different directions. Whereas in, in spherical coordinates, just one number all you have to worry about. So you do this problem in spherical coordinates. So even for a, for a scalar here, there's different representations of the same number. In that coordinate system, there's one number. Here you have to add three together. Or three part, three components that add to that. They're not really components, but they're they're the, the scalar parts of that particular quantity. Now, what is the point here? Uh, U, the scalar field, is related to the quantity, the gravitational force. Where G, G, the gravitational force, is a vector that holds me down, pointing towards the interior of the Earth. Uh, and it's given by the map of the general relationship to that quantity is a quantity called del u, where this is an, a differential operator. What do 
I mean by differential operator, it is a spaceship with a what's that? That is an upside down triangle. <laughs> Most of you probably have never seen this before, right? Anybody seen it before? Maybe one or two people? Yeah, yeah enough physics people have seen it. Dell, if you want to write it down, not, don't worry about it. In, in, in rectangular coordinates, or Cartesian coordinates, Dell is a partial derivative relationship. If this is Dell U, it would be the partial of U with respect to X, X hat plus partial of u with respect to y, y hat, plus partial of u with respect to z, z hat. So it's the great, what, what it is, is the variation of this quantity over spatial dimension z. So that's why this is usually referred to as the gradient in this context. Because if you take this quantity and operate it on the spatial derivative, you get that particular, you get a quantity which is the ch rate of change of this quantity in the x direction, rate of change in the y direction, rate of change in the z direction. Now, why would you do this, however, in rectangular coordinates when the relationship is given over there is in spherical coordinates? So in spherical coordinates, that same quantity, del u is spherical, becomes partial of u with respect to r, r hat, plus partial with respect to p, and partial with respect to, to theta, oops, which are zero, because there's no functional relationship between theta and p in either of those quantities. So those just disappear, and this actually simplifies to so-called del u is just z u, z r, uh, some r hat. The derivative, the r, basically it's the rate of change of u in the r direction. That's all it is, right? Simplified that way. Now, what does that have to do again? What does that have to do with anything? Well, I can take that derivative. I can take the derivative. 